Uh, while we know the protagonists, it's also important for all of us to know that the families are the center of all this that has so far spanned the last two months, will be the one not only to benefit, but also have a certain feeling of nostalgia, but also vindication. And that's why uh, TV3 News, we decided to bring them this evening into the studio. And um, I have the chair for the Rastafari Council of Ghana, Ahuma Bosco Okanse, also known to many of us as Daddy Bosco. Good evening to you and thank you for joining us. And Pleasure. just uh, uh, by his his left, I have uh, Tyrell Magai. Yeah, yeah, Terio. 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 And thank you for coming as yes, well. Sir. And then I have Ohinaba and Krabia. And now we'll have to be admitted by Chimota School. Congratulations to you. Thank you. <laughs> and then also, I have Mana Miles, who is also the mother of Ohineba. I have to say, um, good work you did so far. And then I have Tyron himself, very vociferous. But uh, look, for you, the Rastafari Council, this is a landmark, is that not it? Most definitely, most definitely. Because um, for a while now, we've had children go to school, and because of their dreadlocks, they've been turned out or they've been forced to cut their locks. So for this ruling from the court, for us is historic. And we believe that it paves the way for a new era in the, um, our relations with the general public. Mm. Uh, Mana, how did your children feel? And I have to say that you speak for the two of them, or even for those related coming forward, maybe having the fear that the next year, they again would have to somehow be outcast. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an exhilarating feeling. I mm. mean, I can't even describe it because we've had sleepless nights, we've cried, we've ended up at psychologists. I mean, a whole lot of things have happened. So, you know, today's ruling, seriously, I cannot put words to how I feel. Oh, and, and, and I mean, for Oheneba and Tyron, because I have to be there as a mother for both of them and, you know, encourage them, motivate them and all of that. And it's, it's, it's been hard, but I'm sure they are very happy. Mm. Oh, you, know, but you still want to go to Achimoto School? Yes. But why is that? <laughs> After all the treatment mentioned out to you? Well, um, as I had that right, I have that right to go to school. And if my right had been, has been breached, I believe that I, I, should, I should have that right to go. So um, I, I'd want to go to Achimoto School and continue till I finish and my goal is to become an IT genius. At the age of eight, I went to IPMC, that's an IT institution for SHS leavers and university students. At that time, I had dreadlocks and I was eight years and they still accepted me. I don't, I don't see why at this age where I, am, I have the requirements, why I should be rejected. Yeah, the court indeed has just spoken your wish. Yeah. But it would also mean that you set the big example for those coming ahead. Um, those who follow the Rastafari or Rastafari religion, um, young children across our country and even beyond our borders who think that they need to be given the right to school, um, that should meet something. What are your aspirations for that? My aspirations, right from the start, when I was turned down, I mean, all I thought was to look for another school and another alternative because I had plans for my life. And the action taken by Achimota to reject me solely because of my hairs, um, it meant it was like interfering with my plans, which I didn't want to destroy. So that was the first thought I had. But then considering all of this, at the moment after um, the jubilation and everything, I thought, Maybe if I knew this was definitely coming, I wouldn't have cried and even fallen sick about that. <laughs> yeah, I would have just kept on a broad smile and even greeted everyone and waved at everyone I met. So I think Rasta kids all around the world can look up to this. Because if before you had thoughts that when you go to a school you might be rejected, right now this is a sure thing to make you believe that once you get into school, there is no way. And if they do, you have every right to take them to court like we did. Yeah. But uh, for Tyro, or Terio, yeah, Terio, uh, yeah, and for Terio, yeah. that would also mean that it's a mark of perseverance. Yes. Perseverance that you don't tend to see a lot among many of us right here yeah. in Ghana. But it also meant that you had to stand your ground. How was it for you as a parent? Well, it wasn't easy, you know, in the beginning, but um, I thought um, 
it was something very necessary, you know, because uh, like uh, Marcus Garvey and Nkrumah fought for us, they had to sacrifice something. And so um, it, it was something that we knew we were going to waste time and stuff, but we were going to, uh, you know, pursue it. And I also have this slogan that uh, it's very important that people learn to refuse some rules because rules are made to govern people and to tune people's minds. And some are harmful. And also some are just for people's um, own interests or their feel, you know. So um, some rules you shouldn't stand, I don't mean all rules, but some rules you shouldn't accept it and just um, take it, you know. So we knew this was something that we were going to try to struggle, but at the end of the day, we were going to win. Mr. Humar Kansi, there's always a certain feeling that, well, if we have a certain religion that's alien to the culture, it always will have to be resisted. How do you think this one will mainstream the Rastafari religion into the traditional psyche we have about which religion and God we should worship? Thank you. Now, the point is, it comes from the indoctrination of our people. Um, it's been proven that dreadlocks is not um, alien to Africa, neither to Ghana, and that it's been with us. And actually, it's been like the, the holy people, the wise people who wear their dreadlocks. Like I said, due to the indoctrination or the colonialization of our people, where we lost our religious and cultural values, and we accepted these foreign values and norms, it's created a situation where things that are African are rejected. So I love the general conversation that came up with this whole thing. It's opened people's eyes. It's made people come to the realization that Rastafari is not alien and that it's African. Yeah. Mm. about what will you take uh, with you to school? What, what, what are you taking to the school, I mean, as a fresh student, having well, gone through all this? Well, is it confidence? Is it one? Yeah, this has motivated me. That's because right. having to go through this it was hectic, but I was still able to, to, to finish and <laughs> be happy. So that means uh, in case I'm to, to meet any further challenges, I'll be able to overcome you, fa you face up squarely. Yeah, that's right. Um, and, and for you, uh, you should be happy, but what will you tell other parents out there? Okay, so um, I will encourage parents to always um, bring up their children to stand up, speak up, and, and um, they shouldn't intimidate children by telling them what to do. Because um, when the issue happened, there were so many people that called friends, family, who were like, sit him down and cut his locks. You know, and I was like, they did you know, that. yes, some even don't talk to me anymore because they felt like I am the mother and I should be able to just, you know, tell my son to cut his locks. Wow. But wow. we didn't bring Ohineba up in that manner. We brought him up to be communicative, to express himself, you know, to be able to tell how he feels, you know, rather than us imposing ourselves mm. on him. And we're able to identify that in all of the situation, he was going to, you know, psychological and mental stress. You know, there was a breakdown where we had to even fall on a psychologist. So imagine if I had gone with what people was, were saying and cut his locks, you know, and then he plunged into depression of a sort. Yeah. And then something happens. Then people will come and say that we are sorry. You know, so I will encourage parents to, you know, allow their children to be themselves. Well, we have to go. Uh, time is fast spent on this, but it's a conversation that would have to uh, open more. You have been the star over the last two months. <laughs> your last words. Okay, well, I'm really grateful. And um, this was uh, more like my first court case because a teenager having to run to court up and now was hectic. But, well, my final words are, well, in life, there are complicating things and in fact life is a really complicated something but it's equally rewarding and that's what makes it beautiful so at some point when i thought i was going through um, so much um, trauma and sorrow because i've been rejected and that i equally qualified if not the best but then at the end i mean like a tunnel there's always an, an, um, an end and this was the tunnel and we've come to the end 
And after everything, I could see that there is much more glory after having fought for my rights. Because had I not fought, um, fought for my rights and just probably cut my hair with um, a down haircut and went to school, <laughs> I don't think I would have really enjoyed it because this is my identity. You know, you meet up with friends and you know, be like, who's this guy and stuff like that. But I'm okay. I'm really glad I did fight for my rights and I think everyone else should. Oh, what a way. Very uh, inspirational, poetic and philosophical there. And thank you all for passing through this short time of notice as well. But